Hi there. It's Secure Digital Life with Doug White and Russ Boschman. Hello. He's right there. Yeah, so we're back again with another exciting episode to talk to you about what's going on with all kinds of different weird security stuff and technology. Today, I wanted to talk about firewalls. Welcome to Secure Digital Life. And you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in. So I'm sorry, I was at a PG show. And I'm really excited to be here. I'm glad you're here because somebody needs to know what's going on. That's right. Okay, so now, now somebody has to drink this. <laughs> I think it's another day. It's another episode. Yeah, he's looking at the wrong camera. You oh, oh, you moved my, you put my camera over here. Eh, there cut. You Basically, forget you ever saw that. I, I think actually forgetting you ever saw that would really be a good idea at this point. People always keep asking me about firewalls and what are they and all this kind of stuff. And, and they, they range, you know, all the way from this. So, so like, you got these kind of gadgets. This is a D-Link uh, uh, little home unit, all the way up to things like uh, Cisco 5500 series ASA firewalls, which cost a lot of money, and they're really powerful and posh, and they can do all kinds of weird tricks and things. Mm -hmm. But everybody needs firewalls. You need firewalls everywhere now because anything that's exposed out in the world can be touched by other people. And so you basically are walking around like you're on the biggest, greasiest subway platform that ever existed on the earth, and you really don't want everybody touching you because no telling what you're going to catch, right? right? right I mean, right. What, what you want to... Yeah, like wearing rubber gloves when you're walking around, you know, not rubber, but, you know, kind of like vinyl gloves, like to protect yeah. yourself from viruses and bacteria and stuff like that. Exactly. But your house is sitting there, or your phone, or even your car now, is sitting there 24-7 on, and that means that people are touching it. I mean, I guarantee it. And you can go look at those things. if you Even with these little ones, you can go look at the logs in these little systems and all of a sudden find everything out. So I was going to tell you how they work because I've been teaching this stuff for a long, long time. All the protocols were built in the 70s. So when they originally designed all these networks back in the 1970s, they came up with all these protocols, which are called IEEE specs. Mm -hmm. And that's the International Engineering... Electrical Engineering. Electrical Engineering and something. Yeah. I don't know. It's an acronym. Everybody just calls it IEEE, whatever mm -hmm. it is. I'm a member of it, so I guess I should know what it stands <laughs> for. But I don't know. I'm a member of all kinds of things. I don't know what they stand for. But I was going to tell you a little bit about how that kind of thing works. So when, when someone is using the Internet, and, and all of you do this... What's going on out there is everybody ends up talking to something called a demon. And it's spelled D-A-E-M-O-N. So not like, you know, the, the Lord of the Underworld demon. No, not like that one. But it's kind of like that in a way. Mm -hmm. but, but, but it's spelled D-A-E-M-O-N. Mm -hmm. And people often mispronounce it as daemon. Which, That's how which I used to say it. Yeah, you don't want to say it like that. It's a huh? demon. And it's a computer science term. And a demon was a small program that waits for something. And it could do all kinds of different things, but in the modern age, a lot of demons wait for someone to say hello. And that's what you do every time you use the internet. Mm -hmm. So the minute you want to go to a website and you type in AAA porn or whatever it is you're typing in, so I'm sorry, we, I was at a PG show. So when you try, type in Disney.com, Disney.com, <laughs> we'll shift that back to something sane, D Disney.com. Your system actually communicates with a demon that's called an HTTPD demon, and it sends out traffic. So the way this works is something like this. Look, I used analog. Russ inspired, me, Russ inspired me in another episode to use analog because he was demonstrating something. So I'm using analog, too. See, I can do old-fashioned things like this. <laughs> but this is a good example. Um, on a system... There are 65,536 ports possible. They're not all available, and, they're not, and a lot of them are being used or whatever, but there's actually that many available. And so demons choose a port, and they run on that port. So that's how you know how to communicate with them. And it's just like a telephone number. So this works right. just pretty much the same way that a telephone number works out in the real world. And I want to connect to something. So if you want to connect to Disney.com, you would go to port 80. I wrote an 80 on here. I don't know if you can see it. See, it's right there. Uh, there's an 80 on this, and this is what the traffic actually looks like. So it's just a packet, and it's got something inside of it. Now, firewalls don't care, at least at the basic level, about what's inside this envelope. Right. Right. So, so this piece of traffic goes to Disney.com. Disney.com has an HTTPD 
demon listening. It's all about the D. On port 80. <laughs> It's supposed to be PG-13, but, you know, it's like, what am I going to do? It's like censorship is coming. It's just be a black rectangle where Russ was. <laughs> it's just, but, but, and it would go to port 80. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So the way firewalls work is they look at these things, and all this traffic starts streaming in. And whatever port it's going to, the firewall can actually make a decision mm -hmm. based on that port. So, for instance, 443. That's a different port and a different daemon. Mm -hmm. This is called HTTPS. Mm -hmm. So this is secure HTTP. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep those in order. It's like a magic trick. Port 80. You allow it through. Then you see something you don't like. Dun, dun, dun. 3389. You know what I, I don't even know what 3389 is. I it's can't. a Microsoft port. Oh. It's, it's a Microsoft port where Microsoft products try to talk to each other locally. Oh. And if they start talking on 3389, if you saw somebody trying to talk to your Microsoft stuff from outside in the world, mm -hmm. you definitely don't want that to be going on, right? right. I, mean, I mean, there's all kinds of these ports that nobody wants to see. So this kind of traffic is going to be gotten rid of. Yep. That wasn't effective at all. I have no skills. Close enough. I have no spatial skills. It probably like, I'm surprised you didn't hear a scream or something <laughs> from like throwing oh, my, my eye, shoulder. My it's eye. like, oh, God, I'm blind. But, but another 443, that's good. 443. Oh, here's a bad one. So now we see another one that we don't like. This one says 23. Do you know what 23 is? Uh, it's not Telnet. Uh, Russell did for Telnet. Oh, no, it is. is. Oh, it is? I thought yeah. it was 21. No, oh, that's okay. FTP. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yep. 23 he's not, Telnet. He's not yeah, a yeah, networking yeah. person. So yeah. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to put you in a no, spot. No, 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 no. I was Russell's right knowledge of poor. I should have go, gone with my uh, in instinct. <laughs> so. right, I don't want to know about that one. <laughs> but 23 uh, is a port for an old service called Telnet. And there is a thing called Telnet D. Mm -hmm. And so the Telnet demon is sitting out there as well. And if you see these ports, again, you get rid of them. You don't want yep. those kind of things coming into your network because you shouldn't be running Telnet. <laughs> And I'm going to show you a demo in a few minutes that actually uh, you'll see some people trying to connect to Telnet mm -hmm. on one of my devices. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's like, hold them up by the ears. They love it. <laughs> and it's like, nobody gets that joke. Oh, boy. Lyndon Johnson. Oh, yay. <laughs> and then here's one. This is a secret one. I, I know. You 17 know, I have no idea what 17 is. Ooh, and it's this, I sealed the envelope, and it, it fell and in a puddle, so it's all gross and yeah. creepy looking. Yeah, it's 1723. I'm sure some of you immediately knew what that was, and you were like, you know, 1723, yes. But uh, 1723 is the endpoint uh, of point-to-point -point VPN. Oh. So a lot of times you'd see traffic coming in like this. We'll talk about why I sealed it, because I want to talk a, a little bit more about another thing in a second. Uh, this is what is called port filtering. So this is what a port filtering firewall actually does for you, is it looks at these ports, and it says, okay, okay. Or no. Or not okay. And when and you can make those decisions. Now, at home, you don't usually want to get involved in that. Mm -hmm. And if you're not running outward-facing services, so you don't have web servers, you don't have things like that, a lot of times you don't want anything coming in. Mm -hmm. You just want your traffic going out. Mm -hmm. Now, one thing to remember is that every one of those pieces of traffic gets a reply, mm -hmm. but that's easy to set up, and it's hard. It, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's always ways around this. There's always ways you can cause trouble with it. But for the most part, these little home systems are just pre-set up. They pretty much block almost everything coming in, and they allow almost anything to go out. Mm -hmm. So that keeps it simple, and that's not a bad thing. Because if it gets complicated and you start fooling with it, then you right. open ports, and the next yeah. thing you know... Why you can't I get on to my FTP client or whatever? Well, yeah, and one of the more common ones that, that I get asked about is, like, for gaming platforms. Right. So if you have, like, a PS4 yeah. or whatever, and yep. you want to connect to the Yeah, I can't network, do my PlayStation updates. You, and, and then yeah. other gamers want to allow connections to come in. Mm -hmm. So this was a real common one that's very dangerous, yep. because a lot of people would ask me, well, how do I allow these gaming connections to come into my system so people from outside can right. do that. And I, I'm usually like, well, that's a really bad idea because now you're advertising. So I'm going to show you a quick video that is of a real live firewall in action so you can actually see that ASA system firewall running. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about what's inside these packets, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Great. Hi, this is Doug White. Just a quick demo then this week. So we were talking about how this stuff works and this is an actual real live firewall and it's running on my network at Roger Williams University and basically this is a Cisco uh, 5510 
uh, enterprise level firewall. So this is a very sophisticated gadget. And at some level, it's no different than the ones we were talking about in, uh, when we were in the studio. And what's, I mean, this thing can do all kinds of tricks, unlike a lot of home equipment and things like that. But these enterprise level routers at some level are, are I'm sorry, firewalls are just doing the same exact thing that we were talking about. And I was going to show you a little bit of it here. So I'm going to actually stop this from moving because it's a lot easier to look at if it's paused. This is a log of packet filtering that's going on on this firewall based on rules that exist in this firewall. So you can see that there are things, in, and I, the colors are backwards, but I like the reds to be stuff that gets accepted. And the reason I do that is because these reds are more risky to me than these blues. The blues are people getting turned away. The reds are people we've let inside. A lot of these people are legit, but we want to be sure, and I like to be able to notice that we have stuff going on. Now, sometimes I have I have oranges here. This was a little it's hard to see that this is orange, but I have oranges here about certain things that are getting denied uh, based on certain criteria that I find problematic. Let's look at a couple of these just so that we understand what's going on based on the demo that I did in the studio. So you can see there's a source address of a packet. There's a destination address of a packet, but what we really care about here, and we could certainly block things based on these addresses. So if I decide one of these people is a bad person, I'm going to block their IP address. And if I think they're changing their IP address, I may block a whole bunch of IP addresses, and that's called blacklisting. But right now, we're talking about primarily these packet filtering kind of ideas, and you can see a lot of these are probes from possible hackers. They're more likely just people that downloaded some little tool and the tool is sitting there scanning uh, out into the world uh, looking for vulnerabilities. So these are people that know there's something out there, they just don't know where it is. And so they just basically send out these probes looking for certain things. Um, let's look at like, um, now you're not seeing a lot of normal traffic here either because that all, I don't log all that normal traffic. So if I see something that's expected, I don't necessarily log it. Let's look at this one. This one came from this IP address you see here. And look at its destination port. So just like we were talking about, this number right here is one of 65,536 possible numbers that exists. And this one is number 22. And I know, because I've been dealing with it a long time, that number 22 port is a demon that listens for um, what is called SSH, or Secure Shell Traffic. This is Encrypted Connects. Now you can actually see that up here there's some legitimate ones, or there's some ones that are actually coming in. Like there's another 22 that's being allowed. So if you look over here in this section, you can see that Access In Permitted. So I let that traffic in, but down here, I blocked this person. So they're being blocked from going to something, and I can see what they're doing, and they're trying to go to a machine that doesn't support that demon, which means that they're looking for SSH demons. And the reason they're looking for SSH demons is because they're hoping they can find one, and they can start trying to guess the password. So they're just probing the world, or it could just be a mistake, but it's probably somebody looking. Let's look a little further. Here's a port 80. Now, port 80, as we, we talked about in the, in the studio, is the most common port probably on the internet because basically that's a web server. And a port 80 daemon is called a TCP daemon, and it's, or an HTTPD daemon, sorry. It's, it's an HTTPD TCP process daemon that is listening for attempts to communicate with websites. Now what someone's done here is they're attempting to go to a web server that doesn't exist. Now that may be an old web server that we took down because our network's very dynamic. Uh, or it may be somebody, it may be a connect. I'm guessing this is a connect to an old website. We had a website for a long time. Somebody probably has a link to it that's automated. And so every so often, and the website's not there anymore, but somebody tries to hit that link that's still up on another page. You see those trying to come in on port 80. Then there's all this chaos stuff. There's just all kinds of traffic. And when you see people probing all these things, they're looking for certain kinds of traffic. 
And if they find it, it may be something that's a huge vulnerability in a known system. So the reason that we monitor these things is to try to watch for behaviors like this. Like I see one right here. Look at this guy. Now this guy was allowed because he's, he's looking at something that's valid, but he's trying to go to port 22 and he's just switching between machines. And, he, and is it the same person? No, it's a different one. You see two attempts on different numbers. So that could just be somebody who forgot the number that they need to go to, or they may be somebody up to no good. Now this one I know is up to no good. And this one's flagged because this is somebody trying to go to port 23. And a port 23 daemon is a telnet daemon. And telnet is one of those old services that we don't use anymore unless we're foolish, but a lot of people still have it open. And so these guys go out and probe. And you can see it's the same person and it trying a few times to hit this uh, service. I don't know why, because it's, oh, I see, well, you know what he's trying to do? I, I know these addresses. What this person's trying to do is they're trying to log into my router. And uh, they're trying to see if I have foolishly allowed Cisco Telnet access to be open on my router, which I have not, but you can see that that's being blocked by this firewall. So the point of all this is, look at how much traffic we captured in just a few seconds. And this is not a high profile network. You can imagine what someone's firewall like this looks like at, say, the FBI or the White House and how much traffic that they would generate from people trying to see if they could get in. These are, for the most part, most of these are Ill illegitimate uh, attempts to try to find things. And you can tell by the numbers. And if you ever want to look up these numbers, you can just look them up and see what services they relate to. And there's big listings of all these. Now, they don't have to be that either, but they could also be malware. Uh, that is running, I mean, or that they hope is running, so they just go out and probe the whole world looking for something running on port 7547. I don't know what that service is, but here's somebody who probed it. So if they go out and look for that, that's exactly what they're trying to do. So that's just a quick demo of what uh, firewall services look like uh, when they're actually defending you. Okay, thanks. Back to the studio. All right, so in, so in that video, now you see that, that there's a log showing all this stuff that's out there probing uh, my systems. Mm -hmm. and, and that's going on 24-7, every day, all day. And, and you say, well, gee, Doug, I don't know, that was a big fancy system. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I'm not a high profile person, like say the FBI or, or somebody like that who just gets slammed constantly. But even at your house, if you go pull down this system at your house, mm -hmm. there are people probing for all these kind of things all the time. Okay. One of the things they like to look for is Internet of Things mm -hmm. because they love to find that you have Internet of Things devices that are sitting at your house like thermostats and light lights, bulbs. Yeah. light bulbs, yep. uh, blinds. I saw yep. one the other day where you can control your blinds mm -hmm. and you know make the blinds open and close. Microwaves, and refrigerators, Micro yeah, toasters. All that stuff. Yeah. So if I want to hack your refrigerator, mm -hmm. I'm looking on the internet and I will find out that LG refrigerators have a demon yep. that's listing on port whatever and I start probing for it like you saw in that demo where those people are just mm -hmm. sending out wild fires trying to find certain key things. So, mm -hmm. so that's sort of the baseline of, of packet filtering type firewalls and, yeah. and that's, that's how that very simple device screens and tries to filter yeah. that. And you can filter on the address too. So just mm -hmm. like blocking calls, which is a really similar thing. I don't want you to call me. I don't want my ex to call me. I blocked that number. I don't have an ex really well yeah. a long time ago, but my wife's still there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I met her once. I met her for the first time. He did. She's not an actress. Well, yeah. so it appears she was not an actress. But do you have, do you have any other comments? Yeah, I mean, the, the reason why Doug was talking about I, IoT devices specifically, and, and we've talked about these in previous episodes on uh, SDL, is because those devices uh, are newer and they're, they're not secure. Uh, they don't have built-in fire. Well, they're not fully secure. They don't have built-in firewalls. They don't have uh, built-in uh, security uh, protocols that would help us uh, or help uh, the people who own them uh, not experience, you know. Well, yeah, there, I mean, there's, there's no standards for IoT at this point in right. time. And it's something that if you watch Security Weekly or you watch any of the other shows mm -hmm. on this network, you'll hear us talk about all the time. Mm -hmm about how there are in these boxes and there are there are chips mm -hmm. we don't know who made the chips well mm -hmm. we do but we don't know how they were made we don't know if they were made in a, in a very standard way or if they went out and they had 50 people programming them 
that ships could have stuff in them. Right. They could have malware in them. They could have demons in them that you don't know about. Mm -hmm. Now, you can scan all this, of course, and you can try to break it and find demons that are listing or whatever. Um, any IoT device could have a daemon running that's listening for connects. And if you don't have a firewall, that means someone could connect to it. And that gets back to another thing. Mm -hmm. Default. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, this is about firewalls, well, but I'm still going to What's the default about password for this particular router? Uh, D-Links are admin, admin, yeah. I think. Or blank, username, yeah. and then it admin, could be. I don't password. know, I'd have to look this one up. But, but that's, that's the danger of these things, first And if of you all. have a refrigerator or something, when you buy it, and it's got, it's got a, a way to connect password. to it over for an Internet of Things device, Somebody out there with their phone says, oh, you know, I don't even know how my refrigerator works. You know, mm -hmm. it's got a TV set in the front and a camera inside, and mm -hmm. I, we've never even connected to it. Uh, I have a new uh, HVAC system in my forensics office, mm -hmm. and they said, oh, it's got all this connectivity. You can manage it with your phone. You can connect to it from outside your house, outside your office. And I was like, wow. I mean, I have firewalls, but... I, I haven't looked at it yet because they haven't turned it on. I did a problem with the electrician, but yeah, I get to sit there all day yesterday. And the electrician's like, yeah, but now you can't turn it on because we have to come back and inspect it. And mm. I was like, oh, great. So I'll just leave the heat off for how long? <laughs> in the winter? Yeah, of course. But, but these default passwords can get you in a jam too because if people can come through your firewall and they can see your refrigerator because they know it's on port 6004 mm -hmm. and they scan like you saw in the demo, mm -hmm. then they go, the default on an LG refrigerator is admin admin, and they log into your refrigerator and do something to it, and maybe you can't get into it next time you want to get into it because they change the password, which is the first thing I would do, maybe. And, and, these, pa and these ports, they're not super secret. Those ports are available widely oh, yeah. on the internet. You do a Google search for ports, known and, ports. And, and they're not standard either. Come, no, they're not. I mean, yeah. I can run a web server on port 8080. Mm -hmm. I can run a, por a web server on port 81 if mm -hmm. I want to. There's a kind of, def uh, it's a de jour standard, mm -hmm. is I think the right word, that, that we adhere to. Uh, but it's not a rule. Right. So I could run a daemon on any port in from zero, to, well, not zero, but I could mm -hmm. run a daemon on a whole lot of ports mm -hmm. all the way up that stack. And if I'm doing that, guess what? That means that somebody can see that daemon. And that's what scanning is all about. And you may have mm -hmm. heard people say port scanning. Yep. And port scanning, which is a very basic skill that a lot of people learn first. Yeah. So when they first get involved, they see port scanning and all this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. That You see ports and you say, I wonder what that port is. And yeah. so when you see a 23, I've got one here. Well, You'd be looking for these because when you see one of those, you're a really happy person because mm -hmm. you say, oh, there, there's a there's, there's a web a, server. Yeah. I know there's a web server there. I, now, if I know an attack against a web mm -hmm. server, I can go right at that port 80 web yeah. server and do that. So that's it's, like, it's like walking into an office building and then testing the doorknobs on each of the offices exactly, and trying to get That's exactly in. what it's like. So, and that's what, that's what port scanning is and like. And sometimes you get an office that says president and CEO, right. and sometimes you get an office that says cleaning supplies. Right. And either one may be right. what you're looking for. It just depends on the day. But it's not about the open office, uh, just like it's not about the the packet itself that's that's uh, bound to that specific uh, port. It's what's inside that matters, right? Well, well, that too. I mean, I mean, if people can get to a demon, that means they can do other things mm -hmm. to it. So, for instance, so we'll go back to my packets. If you send this packet, this envelope thing is irrelevant. It's this that's inside of it. Mm -hmm. And this is literally, well, not literally, but it's very similar to what would really happen in the real world. This packet traffic hits the firewall. Mm -hmm. The firewall says, yeah, that's a port 80. I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. And it allows it through. The demon opens the envelope. Mm -hmm. And inside it says, hello. And when you deal with websites like HTTP, regular old Disney.com websites, mm -hmm. It's sent in plain text. So what's inside that envelope is literally, if I can open the envelope, I can look at it and I can see what it is. Mm -hmm. So another kind of firewall exists. And these often have different names, but it's essentially packet examining firewalls. So these are firewalls that can actually open packets mm -hmm. and look inside them mm -hmm. and go, yeah, that's what I would expect. It says, hello, it's port 80. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, that's, that's what we expected to see in that, in that packet. And packet examination is slow. Mm -hmm. It takes a lot more horsepower than you're going to get here, although a lot of these little routers now will even do some basic kind of packet examination because you need to. Mm -hmm. You need to look for horrible threats. Yep. So that one's okay. Um, I got some more. Oh, here's one. This one says, W get something, gimme. <laughs> uh, w gets another one of these old commands. So if I open this packet up and I see, well, it's port 80, it says W get, that's a web command for HTTP. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what I would expect to mm -hmm. see. So this packet's probably okay and fine. Mm -hmm. Now, here I got one. Uh oh, this is a different one. Now, this one 
443, Secure. this is a bigger problem. This is HTTPS, mm -hmm. and, and it's not a problem. It's a good thing to have, but yep. it's a problem for firewalls. Because when I open this one up, it has something that you can't read, unless you just happen to speak Klingon. <laughs> yeah, this is Klingon. I, um, yeah, it's, it's Klingon for hello. Um, you, you wouldn't believe there's a Klingon translator on the Internet, but oh, then again, yeah. yes, you would. They have Klingon-speaking camps, Doug. I know. I mean, it's like you can study in school. I thought it was Kapla meant hello in Klingon. I don't know. I did the translator. Maybe oh. it's backwards. Kapla. Who knows? But it's something encrypted. You don't know what it is. So now your firewall packet examination has to either just say, okay, I don't know how to read that, or I'm going to let it go. So this is a little bit more of a complication. Let's see what else I got. I got more port 80s. Oh, give me more. So, yeah, so more <laughs> good stuff. Another 443. Oh, this one says surrender in Klingon. Uh, I don't even know how to say that. <laughs> I don't either. I, I'm Jacques <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. It's like French and uh, Slavic. And yeah, I need to smoke a bunch of unfiltered cigarettes yeah, yeah, and I can get those little accents. Yeah, all that. that.